if you've been paying attention recently to UK politics, you'll have known that more Brexit things are happening. And because of this, there have been more Brexit protests, which are amping up and up in terms of impatience and in some places rowdiness which is understandable given how uncertain it actually is that we're going to end up with a brexit but of course this does not excuse the awful behavior i have seen so we'll start off anna sorbury speaker urges police to tackle mp harassment speaker john burkow has described the abuse and harassment of mps outside parliament as a type of fascism and called for a change of policing policy now, John Burke, I was done the natural thing of a typical lefty of just name calling and saying that everything's fascist. People and MPs have been abused since time immemorial because people get emotional about their politics. And so that comes out in an angry slur every now and then. Again, I'm not excusing it. I'm just explaining that it isn't fascism. It's a natural emotional reaction. Anyway, at least 115 MPs have called on police to improve their response to abusive protesters outside Parliament. The Metropolitan Police has said it is ready to deal robustly with any instances of criminal harassment. Deputy Assistant Commissioner Lawrence Taylor said the force was assessing whether any crimes had been committed following a third-party report of a public order offence on College Green opposite the Houses of Parliament. He said Scotland Yard will be enhancing the policing presence in the run-up to next week's vote on Theresa May's Brexit deal. So we have 115 MPs calling on the police to improve things, the police saying they are dealing robustly and enhancing police presence around the area, but I haven't actually told you what's happened yet. Well, it seems very bad, doesn't it? But it seems Ms. Sorbury was shouted at, including being called a liar and a Nazi during live TV interviews on BBC News and Sky. The former minister, a supporter of a fresh Brexit referendum, was later called scum and jostled as she tried to re-enter the Palace of Westminster. She criticised the police for not intervening and called for protesters to be prosecuted under public order law. Section 5 of the 1986 Public Order Act means that threatening or abusive words or behaviour or disorderly behaviour might be deemed a criminal offence. But Article 10, Right to Freedom of Expression, and Article 11, Right to Freedom of Peaceful Assembly and Freedom of Association, of the European Convention on Human Rights contains the right to a peaceful protest. I don't see why that had to be added in. I'm pretty sure the UK have their own laws on that. Now, people shouting things off camera while someone's being interviewed on TV is a really common thing in the UK. It's where the fucker right and the pussy meme came from, from Australia, and it's happened in the UK media a bit, and it's when someone shouted, oh, and you're a wanker, which was absolutely amazing. But I think when you're jostling her and harassing her on the street, that is where I draw the line. And that's where I genuinely think maybe some sort of public order law should come into effect on the guy to punish him. But compared to other things that have happened to other politicians, not on Parliament Square, nothing happens to them. For example, we've had Jacob Rees-Mogg, whose kids have been heckled outside by a left-wing protester. We've had Nigel Farage, who has had he's had his family driven out of a pub by left-wing protesters. He says his life's been a misery after Brexit. Nothing ever seems to happen when it's the left-wing going after the right-wing. And it's very obvious. Hell, I'll let Nigel Farage explain it himself. I mean, I've suffered this. I mean, every day, literally every day, year after year, you know, we even reached the, the position where... My family was attacked, uh, the car was smashed up and vandalised, written off, um, and the police didn't pursue a single prosecution. Uh, now, because somebody in Westminster has been abused, we're told the police are investigating whether there's been a crime. So let's get a sense of perspectives on this. There is nothing new about this. There is horrible behaviour taking place by both sides of an argument, but we mustn't overreact to this. MPs, public figures, should be free to go out and express their opinion without the threat of violence. But if we try now uh, to put in place laws, or if the police start prosecuting people for throwing terms of abuse, that reaction, I think, would be over the top. And Farage is absolutely right. This person shouldn't be punished for the words he said, because the words he said, whether reasonable or not, are legal. He is legal to call whoever he wants, whatever he wants. He may seem like a prick, but he is legally allowed to do it. And he is not legally allowed to go up and jostle an anyone, not just an MP, but anyone, 
who is just trying to get literally to their place of work to carry on with their work. You can't do that, and that's where I think he should be punished. Not for his speech, but for his actions. I pray to God that the MPs don't take this as an opportunity to try and censor the general public. But back to the whole Anna Sorbery name-calling thing. Even Jacob Rees-Mogg on the Times wrote a comment article saying that he disagrees with her, but calling her a Nazi is rude, stupid and weak, and of course, all three are true. It actually starts this off quite well, I think. Abuse is not free speech. Shouting at someone from a short distance is not free speech. Intimidation is not free speech. The treatment of Anna Sorbery recently was wrong and not a support for democracy, but an attack upon it. And I think those are humbling words, more or less. Although I have to say the second part, shouting at someone from a short distance, I think that entirely, directly is affected by context. But I think in this context with Anna Sorbery, I have to agree with Rhys Mogg on this one. He makes a decent case for free speech throughout the article, saying free speech is about making rational arguments and trying to persuade the other person that your opinion makes more sense and is more logical. While I suppose that is a small section of it, Jacob, of course. Those who resort to abuse are admitting that they have lost the argument before it has begun. It does not advance Brexit to be offensive to Remainers, nor vice versa. Even worse, it makes a sensible discussion harder. Yes, but that does that mean it should be illegal in certain forums, Mr. Jacob Rees-Mogg, with your foreign bill that you support. The rest of the article is a basic defence of free speech. I just wish that he agreed with the principle on the internet. I would like to think it is just because he is unwise about the internet and doesn't really understand how it works, but I think that he would put in the research to this if he really cared about it, so... But of course his story isn't over yet, because The Guardian got involved and decided to have a look into this guy's history. Pro-Brexit activists said all Muslims should be removed from the UK. A video found of James Goddard, part of a group who barracked Anna Soubry, arguing Islam should be banned from the West. Yes, uh, it wouldn't be The Guardian if they didn't try and smear the guy who was already obviously not a pleasant human being. So after associating him with the Yellow Vests, which, by the way, I'm not necessarily against, but I don't really like the idea of just copycatting the Continentals simply because I am a classical British liberal, and I don't really like following what Continentals do. But after associating him with the UK branch of the Yellow Vests and saying that he wants to ban Islam from the West, he goes on to say, Goddard, who has regularly filmed himself and other activists harassing and abusing people, including the Conservative MP Anna Sulbury, which they link to the most recent story. So if you really want to convince me that he regularly does this, please show me evidence other than the thing that everyone's talking about. Anyway, has built up his profile by live streaming concentrations to Facebook and seeking donations to finance his actions. However, following calls from the Speaker John Burkow, as well as from more than 100 MPs for a stronger response from the police after a group including Goddard barracked Sorbury as she was walking to Parliament, his Facebook and PayPal pages were removed. <gasps> Use your full stops, Guardian. Goddard's page on the mass funding website Patreon, oh god, on which he styled himself a political activist and sought donations has also been suspended. Well, that's really not helping the case for the whole Sargon situation, is it? So the Guardian goes through his views that he wants Muslims out of the country, is willing to pay them to go voluntarily, and if they don't do that, he's going to have to, quote, think of a legal way around that. It then goes into this sentence. The group Hope Not Hate has said that the emergence of movement raises fears that amid the Brexit process, the threat from the far right is growing and the risk of disorder and violence is on the rise. Well, that's... Very fucking convenient coming from you, Hope Not Hate, given that you're, you'd happily smash up a UKIP table in Sheffield when they are peacefully spreading their pamphlets, as you like to do. In recent weeks, members of the group outside Parliament have also blocked Westminster Bridge, shouted sometimes sexist and racist abuse at TV crews. I've not seen any evidence of that and you haven't provided it, so thank you for trying to lie to me about yellow vests, because that's all I can assume you are doing. Stormed into the offices of a radio station and the Labour Party and held small demonstrations in a number of cities. Why have you only linked the last one of those examples? Uh, like, why would you not link something for all of them? I mean, the other two were ridiculously high claims, and I'm not bothering to do the work, because I have better things to do today. But you'd, you're only linking the last one where... <laughs> it's like, you're only linking the one that's peaceful. I don't understand that. I'd happily believe that they have held small demonstrations in cities, 
I'm not happy to believe that they actually stormed radio stations and hurled abuse at TV crews. Just give me an example and I would believe you. I mean, for God's sake, you're, the link sends me to one article about a girl who was 13 who was arrested for suspicion of assaulting a police officer and explains that three other men were being done for public order offences. Like, There's no details in this. You've got four people out of a hundred who have done something wrong. Like, it's a really weird article you've linked to, but I honestly can't be bothered going through it. I must also say it came as a great surprise to me this morning when I noticed that the front page of the Daily Mail, which I'm constantly being told is a far-right newspaper who are a load of fascists, decided to make it look like Jared Batten was on his side in some way. It's like you kipping the hate monger. The bully who abused Anna Sombri at the Commons is a far-right activist who posed with the UKIP leader. Right. I have been to UKIP conferences before and everyone gets selfies with some of the MPs, including Jared Batten, and they get it with the uh, e-celebs like Count Dankula and Sargon of Akkad. I know because I was there when it was happening. Jared Batten has had his picture taken with literally hundreds of, th not thousands, but tens of thousands, maybe, of people. He goes to that many places and he's seen that much in public. He is a popular figure when it comes to UKIP. So, of course, when you say this guy who didn't like Anna Sorbury and is against Muslims happens to <laughs> be next to a man in a picture who also doesn't particularly like the teachings of Islam but isn't quite as reverent it seems on getting rid of them right that doesn't actually mean anything and it's a ridiculous thing to put on the front of your paper I actually think it's just a virtue signal this and that is really surprising from the Daily Mail given how much they hate and I mean hate political correctness and finally James Goddard yellow vest activist abuser of Anna Sobri has Facebook and PayPal accounts deleted and this is the part that I find absolutely terrifying. The article's mainly just quotes from Mr Goddard but it does mention that Facebook just said that they banned him for their hate speech policies which again Facebook's hate speech policies are ridiculously draconian and are really arbitrary and arbitrarily enforced so I can't really see that being a big deal anyway as people don't really like Facebook but the PayPal and the Patreon one that's the guy's income he may be a tit but it is his income now if he was uploading hate speech to Patreon which I don't agree with the policy but given that hate speech is against terms and conditions for Patreon and he said some racist stuff on Patreon then yes that should be taken away from him because at least they are enforcing their terms and conditions but PayPal is a bit different. They're basically saying, don't use the money for illegal activity. And he's not really. I mean, if he gets done by the Public Order Act, then yes, he will be. But the thing is, it is the law's responsibility to deliver justice to this man. If it turns out he's broken a Public Order Act of 1983, then he will be punished accordingly within the law. And then, by all accounts, he is redeemed and ready to be put back in society. This doesn't mean that he can't just use services because you have now become the moral arbiters of the world and everyone in it. It is your job to provide a service. If you block off that service because someone did something that is outside of your control or let's say your jurisdiction of providing that service, then you should do absolutely nothing and let him continue being a customer. So if he was using PayPal to do something illegal, fine. And the thing is, we don't know if this is the case or not yet. So far, he's just being investigated, but he hasn't been prosecuted. When it turns out he's actually done something illegal, that's when you should ban the account. But the fact you have preemptively done this shows me that you are trying to be the moral guide to society. And that is not your job as a payment provider. To put it simply, this has made a mountain out of a molehill. The only thing that should happen here is that the man should be served his justice for hurling abuse and harassing Anna Sobri as she walked to Parliament across from College Square. Facebook shouldn't have virtue signalled by banning the man, Patreon shouldn't have virtue signalled by panning, banning the man, and PayPal shouldn't have virtue signalled by banning him from his their services either. So far the man is presumed to be innocent until he is found to be guilty, which let's admit it he probably will be, that is when you can take action with your policy on legality. You shouldn't be moral arbiters of speech. That should be no one's job. All that does is make people resentful, code language, 
and get people who are going to do bad things in power. I value freedom above all, and you should too. But that's everything I had for today, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you soon.